Well, here's what Senator Spartacus said about Kavanaugh that has everyone up in arms. Corey? My hope is that just beyond the vicious partisan rancor that is going on, beyond the accusations, we don't lose sight of what this moral moment is about in this country and ultimately ask ourselves the question, is this the right person to sit on the highest court in the land for a lifetime appointment? And then ultimately, not whether he's innocent or guilty, this is not a trial, but ultimately, has enough questions be raised that we should not move on to another candidate? No, oh, it doesn't matter whether he's innocent or guilty. Isn't that great? That is so an American. With me now, co-host of The Five and author of the brand new book, What the Hell Do You Have to Lose? Trump's War on Civil Rights. It is Juan Williams. Uh, Juan, we're already getting well into the 2020 presidential cycle. Never mind the midterms. You have Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren actively committing to run for the president in, in presidency, and, and Cory Booker appears to be doing the exact same thing. Do you think Democrats need their version of Donald Trump in order to combat Trump himself? I don't know if it's possible, but I think Trump has already said, and he did this just this week, he said that's 1% Biden, and it's crazy Corey, and he mm -hmm. was going down in Pocahontas. I mm -hmm. think you heard all this, Kennedy. So he has really, what was interesting to me about this was, hey, we haven't had the midterms yet, but he seems to be moving on yes. and talking about those, that 2020 presidential race. So the key issue for— Because that's what involves him directly, and that's what he likes to well, talk about. When he's at the center of things, that's, that's where that, he That really to pleases his, his ego. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I just, it's interesting to me to hear you say it, because I think that's exactly right. But I, a lot of people don't want to say that— Trump is a narcissist. Yeah, yeah he does. Uh, he, he certainly loves it when the conversation revolves around him. But Cory Booker taking the moral high ground here is kind of laughable. And I think it is clumsy. And I don't think this is the time to be bombastic. And, and people are over the hyper moralizing because it's splitting people in two. And we're already in, in these two distinct camps, at least people who are Republicans. Oh, and Democrats, I don't think it's, it's delightful being a libertarian in all of this. Yeah, but I, you know, I sit back but and the thing is, laugh and laugh because but everyone who, who just here, plays into the politics. Here's what might temper your laughter. I think we are being torn apart yeah. as a country, and I don't like it, uh, and I don't care which side you're on. The thing is, we're Americans, and that might sound milk toast to some of your viewers, but I mean it from the heart. No, that, what you, I think what you're saying is we have lost the desire to find the common ground, yes. and that is heartbreaking. And I, what I find is so, so many conversations, if you talk about politics as the art, the science of compromise, people say... You're a punk. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to hold a hard line. We are being driven, even if you look at these midterms, the number of retirements on the Republican side, mm -hmm. it's like everybody took out the middle. So now you're all with the far right. And on the Democratic side, it's being driven, especially if you look at the people who are winning. Yep. Uh, Alicia Presley Some up in these, Boston, uh, Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, it's, it's going further hard and further. Right, hard left. left. Oh, so, which brings us to your fantastic book, What the Hell Do You Have to Lose?, which, you know, is a book written about your support of Donald Trump. No, I think that's it. <laughs> Let's flip that. But it's, here's what's up about this book. Trump has made the case, I think, in some ways a divisive message delivered to people about not only blacks, but mm -hmm. immigrants, right? And what I'm saying is here, there is a lot to lose. And I think that you have to acknowledge in terms of the black experience in this country, yeah. hey, wait a second, look at all these people who are striving to get into the middle class, who want to do better. Mm -hmm. They're not to be defined by the 20% that's in poverty. How about the plus 50% who are solidly in the middle class. I think it's the greatest achievement of the civil rights I, I era. Think, I think the fact that there is such a misperception about the black community, uh, it, it is such an incredible disservice. And, and to your point, because I think you're going to make this point, so I want to jump ahead of you, Kennedy. Guess what? A lot of times people on the left only focus on those who've been left behind yep. rather than the achievement of people who are trying to fulfill their American dream. I think you're right that they're trying to do the right thing, but in all of that, they're creating, they're exacerbating the victimhood. Correct. And That's the what majority I'm of people are like, no, I, I want to do right by my family. I want to start yes. a business and I want to succeed. And I think that's Get the, the government key. the hell out of the way so more people can do that. Black, white, well, Asian. Well, I mean, it's like what Latino. happened with taxis in this town. You know, yeah. get rid of the Medans. Let people show some initiative, some enterprise, and they'll 
they'll do it. But I think, again, it's not only the blacks, it's the Latinos, mm -hmm. it's MS-13 wants to kill all the white people. You know, this is not going to help us yeah. to find the common ground that you're talking about. All right. Well, Juan Williams, it's always great to talk to you. And I love your writing. So Thank you so much. Even if you don't always agree with Juan, oh, you that's... should always buy his book. <laughs> Hanukkah's coming up. Thank you so much, Juan. You're welcome. Great to talk to you.